I've been a huge advocate for WS Form for quite a while now, not just because of how well it's built, but because of everything you can do with it. Now with that versatility comes some complexity, so I wanted to put together a video where I could show you all the basics in 15 minutes or less. Now because of that time limit, we're not going to be able to get too deep into any of the settings here, but I promise by the end of this video, you're going to have a great understanding of how WS Form works, and you'll be able to do 90% of everything you're ever going to need in the plugin. Now if I'm going to keep that 15 minute promise, we better get started. Like a lot of plugins in WordPress, WS Form operates off of a freemium model, so you can go right to the WordPress plugin repository and and download the free or light version of WS Form, and you have a pretty functional form builder just on its own without spending a penny. But for me, I typically go for the pro version of things, and WS Form is no exception there. I'm personally on this agency plan, mostly because it gives me unlimited sites, plus it gives me access to all the add-ons. And when it comes to integrations, WS Form has a whole lot of them, whether you're wanting to send this to your email marketing system or you have some other third-party system you need to connect in with your forms, chances are WS Form has an integration for it. But in today's video, we're just gonna be installing the WS Form Pro plugin. Once you understand how the plugin's core functionality works, you'll intuitively understand how all the add-ons work, so I don't think it makes sense to go through each one of those individually. So today we're really just gonna be talking about how to do the basics, but we're not gonna go into every little setting. WS Form is very comprehensive, but it's not complicated. As you'll see in this video, everything you need to do, there's a toggle or input field for, and once you know what you're looking for, it's pretty quick to get around. So here on this demo side, I've gone ahead and already installed WS Form Pro and activated it. And if you go in here to the menu that you get when you add WS Form, we can go down here to the settings. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is add your license, which is here under the license tab. I've gone ahead and already added that in there and activated it. But there are a lot of things you can go through here in this settings page. I would recommend whenever you start with WS Forms for the first time, you go in here and at least cruise through all these different settings so you can see what's available to you. Typically, I will be able to leave all these on their defaults, but it's nice to know what's there in case I run into something that I want to tweak. I'll know that there's a setting for it here in the settings panel. So let's go ahead and add our first form. To do that, I'll just hover over here and click on add form. Now, the first time you open up WS form, you're gonna get a little bit of an onboarding wizard. You can go ahead and watch this video if you like. We're just gonna go ahead and skip through that today. If you'd like to start with something that's done for you, there's plenty of templates to choose from here. And if you install any of the add-ons, some of them come with additional templates you can use as well. For us, I think we're just gonna start blank. So I'm gonna hover over this blank tab and click use template. Since we're building out our first form here, you'll see these little glowing tooltips. These are more tutorials here for you just so you can get familiarized with the system. It only takes a minute to go through all these, but since we're gonna do that here in this video, I'm just gonna hit skip tutorial and make those all go away. Across this top toolbar, you have all of your basic needs covered. You can publish your form, preview it, style it, or view your submissions. We'll go through all of these in the video. And over here on the right-hand side, you have undo, redo, import form, export form. And then you have your toolbox here, which is all the fields that you can add to your form. On top of that, there's conditional logic. There's all the form actions. You can get to all the support docs here. And there's a form settings button here that will control the overall settings of your entire form. But let's go ahead and turn our attention to building out a form. The first thing you see here is tabs. You can add multiple tabs to a form and that will allow you to paginate your form if you just wanna show a single question or multiple questions on one page and then have users go to the next page for the next set of questions. Underneath that, you'll see a section here and sections are just a way for you to be able to group information. This can be really handy when you're setting up conditions and you need to do if then statements that control a whole bunch of fields at once. It can also help with styling if you're wanting to group information together. When you hover over this section here, you do have a settings button that will allow you to add this to one of your save sections. So you can save sections in here and reuse them. You can also import sections, export sections, duplicate an entire section or delete a section. And when you click on the settings button here for your section, you do have a few more settings in here under basic and advanced. But let's go ahead and get some fields added to our form. To do that, I'm gonna to go to our toolbox here, make sure we're under fields and I'll add something like maybe a text field here, a radio field, and then we'll add a submit button, which we can find down here in the button section. Now, an important thing to realize about WS Forms is that each one of these field types has contextual settings. So if we click on these settings here for our text field, we can see things like label that might show up on all of our field types, but there are gonna be things inside this panel that are specific just to text fields. 
Everything you could want to do with one of these fields is here. We have default values, placeholder, help text. We have an advanced tab here where you can go in and change the position of the label, add classes to your field, or even set up minimum, maximum characters, input mask, or patterns. We also have a data list here if you need to import information in. I'll go ahead and change this field label to name and we'll go down to our radio field. Here we could add required if we wanted to make sure the user had to make a selection here. Default values, help text like we saw before. But on this one, since it's a radio button, we can actually set the orientation of those radio fields. By default, it's gonna be set to vertical, but we could change that to horizontal or grid, and that's gonna change the orientation of these fields on the front end. There's other settings here under the advanced section. These are all pretty logical defaults, but you'll wanna go through these panels just to make sure you're familiar with what's there in case you need to do some more advanced changes. For a radio field, you're definitely gonna need your different radio button options. So here we have radio one, radio two, and radio three. You can always add more rows by clicking this add row button. You can make rows selected by default, disable rows, hide rows, or delete rows with any of these icons here. You can also map all these selections so you can map the label or the values, and you can decide if it's the label or value that controls some of your actions, like sending off an email or putting something inside your CRM. Last in our demo form here is our submit button. Of course, you're gonna need a button here if you want people to be able to submit your form, but not all forms need a submit button. I've done forms before where I was doing something like a calculator and there was no reason to submit because it was doing all the calculations on the fly in the front end. Again, we have some different settings here for a button than we have for our radio field or text field, so you're gonna wanna go through these menus and just get yourself familiarized with them. There are a lot of settings in WS Form, which I know when I was first getting started was one of the things that was a bit overwhelming. However, like I said before, they're all pretty logical defaults, so I'm not always needing to dive into these settings. It's just important to know what's available to you, so if you do need it, you know exactly where to go. And this includes all the responsive settings. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a slider here with different breakpoints, so I can change the width of my device here and make adjustments to my form based on the width. If I wanted to put the name and the radio button next to each other on anything from 768 and above, I can just go up to this field here and drag this field to make it smaller and do the next one to match and that's automatically going to put these two next to each other. That means you can visually rearrange your forms and get things looking the way you want to. Now all of this cascades, so if I go to any bigger sizes, we're still gonna have these next to each other, but if I go down to one of the smaller sizes, they're gonna go back to stacking on top of one another. You have five different breakpoints to choose from here, so you can really rearrange this form to make sure it looks good on all devices. Next, let's look further into the conditional logic. So if we go up here to the conditional logic button, we'll see a window over on the right hand side. If ever these windows are too small for you, you can expand them here and then contract them back down. Now the conditional logic in WS form works very similar to any other conditional logic system. So we'll just set up a simple condition here. We'll go ahead and add a new row. I'll just call this hide button. And we'll go in here and say, if the radio field we set up has no row checked, then we can set our then statement. We could go down here and find our submit button and set the visibility to hidden. Now we have our else statement, so if then else, we're gonna go in here and set the visibility to visible. What this is gonna do is make sure that our submit button only shows up once the user has made a selection inside the radio field. Now you can add as many conditions as you'd like here and there's lots of different options to choose from. Like I said, if you're familiar with doing any kind of conditional logic, I think all of this is pretty intuitive. You'll just wanna go through the settings to figure out what all is available to you. Next up is our actions panel. These are gonna be actions you wanna take mostly when the form is submitted, but there are other things you can do inside the action panel as well. Now my default, I have a save submission, which is just gonna save any submissions to the database. We have show message, which is just gonna show a message to the user on the front end. By default, this one says, thank you for your submission. And then we have another one in here for send email, which is where you can configure an email that's sent once the form is submitted. This could be an email to yourself, letting you know that a form has been submitted, or it even could be an email that goes out to the user after they submit the form. You can have multiple send actions, so you could send emails out to all kinds of people anytime a form is submitted. You can go through all the settings here. You can clone actions. You can disable actions. Just like on the conditional logic, we can add a row here add a new action, and then choose from the different actions in this menu. Now, when you install some of the add-ons, you're gonna have additional actions you can do here as many of the add-ons connect into third-party systems. And when you have those installed here, you'll see those additional actions listed in this menu as well. If you do need a little bit of help, the support button will get you to the entire knowledge base where you can search for things. So you can search right here without leaving the dashboard and get to any of the help documents. 
And here we have the form settings. These are settings that control the entire form. Again, you'll wanna go through these and see what's available to you. Most of the time, I don't have to go in here and make too many changes, but it is nice to know all the things that are available to you. We'll go ahead and save our changes here and we'll publish our form. You'll probably find yourself using the preview button quite a lot as you're building out a form. As I was building this out, it's going ahead and preparing this form and the preview button lets me see it on the front end. So if I went in here and made some changes, let's say I decided I didn't like those being next to each other, I could go ahead and make that adjustment. And if I go back to the form preview, it's automatically refreshed that. It does a hot refresh anytime you make some changes. So it's a great way of seeing what's going on with your form so you can see the front end of it. You probably noticed this debugger at the bottom of the form. This has a lot of really handy features, especially for developers. But even as you're testing a form, you can use things like this populate button that will automatically go ahead and fill in our form. You can see here our submit button showed up once we filled in that radio field. If I clear that out, you can see our condition logic is working as it's hiding that button until we populate that radio field so that's working great. You can also submit this, populate and submit, save, reload, reset, and clear. This is a really handy debugger tool, but I'm just gonna go ahead and close it now so it's not in our way. Now, personally, I think WS Form looks pretty good out of the box, and it does a great job of inheriting the styles from your website, but chances are you're gonna wanna style this form even further. We'll go back into the editor here and we'll click on style. They recently completely overhauled the way the styler works, and there is more controls for styling a form in here than any other form builder on the market. The best feature is being able to search for certain settings. So if I search for button, you can find all the different settings here for styling our buttons. I did an entire dedicated video on how the styler works. So I'll make sure to link that down in the video description below because there's a lot to go through here. But a few of the highlights is that it brings in all your theme colors. It uses variables. You can use multiple color spaces. It has automatic dark and light mode. You can save your styles. You could use multiple styles on a single website. So for instance, you might have a light background most places and need dark text on your form, but have a dark footer that needs light text. You can set up those multiple form styles and then apply them to forms individually. You can also export all those styles and import all the styles. Like I said, definitely go check out that video I did on how the styler works. Back here in our edit screen, I'm just gonna go ahead and give this form a name of demo and we'll hit publish. We're gonna go to our pages and add a new page. We'll call this demo form. And if you go into the inserter, you can find a block for WS form so you can bring your forms right into your page. I'll go ahead and select that demo form and we can see it here on the back end. Even the conditional logic works here in the back end. We'll go ahead and publish this page so we can view it on the front end. And let's go ahead and put in my name here. We'll select one of these radio fields and submit our form. You can see our success message here, which I showed you when we were setting up the actions on the form. And now we'll be able to go in and view our submissions. So we'll go back into the dashboard under WS form submissions. We can see we have one new submission. And in here we can select our demo form from the dropdown list and see all the submissions on this form. You can export all this data or export any one of these individually. You can also go into your screen options here and change which columns get shown inside these submissions here. So if there's specific information you wanna be able to see at a glance, you can always make those changes and control which columns you view. WS Form is the most comprehensive form builder on the market and I don't think it's even close. Now, because I was trying to keep this video under 15 minutes today, we weren't able to get into the weeds on too many of these features. But one thing I wanted to make sure I pointed out is their attention to accessibility, which I know can be a nightmare when it comes to form builders. If there's anything in this video that I glossed over that you'd like me to do a deeper dive on, let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe and we'll see you then.